With the Captain Marvel movie out, Marvel decided to realign her origin and make it better with the movie. So in the comic books, the comic book character of Captain Marvel went by the name Miss Marvel and has had a crazy, weird, and pretty bad history. But to make things better for the movie, they have realigned it with the new origin in the secret life of Captain Marvel, which is what we're going to be covering today, her new origins. And if you're wondering where you are, well, you have found the Comic Storian channel, where we take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues of comic books, video games, movies, and TV shows, and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. We then read them dramatically back to you in an audiobook format, basically allowing you to follow along with your favorite pop culture storylines, even if you don't have time to sit down and enjoy them as much as we do. And if you want to talk more about the Captain Marvel movie and the comic book, join me over at my stream, twitch.tv slash eligiblemonster, where I'm live probably right now. Either way, let's get into that origin that you can enjoy right now! All stories start at the beginning. Carol Danvers is no different. Hapswell Sound, Maine. A young Carol Danvers and her brother spend every summer in Maine, swimming, fishing, flying kites. But not every memory is a happy one. Memories of her childhood fill Carol's thoughts to the present day. As Captain Marvel's fists collide with the villain Teleneth, every blow brings back her father. A fist raised against her brothers, of her mother pulling her away. The memories bring pain, and fighting is easier than pain. Moonstone cowers back from the anger in Captain Marvel's face, in the power of her blows. But Carol won't be stopped. Her punch is throwing Moonstone across the sky as the rest of the Avengers watch on. Would you call that rage disproportionate? Black Panther asks, but Thor believes that no actions are disproportionate in war. Captain America moves in, pulling Marvel off of Moonstone. I've got you, Carol. He tries to soothe her, but Captain Marvel is struggling to breathe, her words punctuated by gasps of air. The rest of the team crowd around her as she falls. Let's get her checked out. Back at the lab, Tony can't seem to find anything physically wrong with Carol. Whatever this is, it must go deeper. Like, underground? We did have that whole mole man thing. Whatever is causing these panic attacks, it's nothing that Tony can find. After a little prying, Tony manages to discover that it might come from the memories of Carol's father. If anyone can understand father issues, it's Tony Stark. And he tries to console his friend with a big hug. Later. Over coffee, Tony suggests that Carol take some time to see a therapist, try to get her head right. She knows exactly what she needs to do and the next day sees her flying towards the northeast. As she flies closer, she sees a new sign, Hapswell Sound, summer home of Captain Marvel. The sign proclaims, bringing a simple, huh, from our hero. As she comes in for a landing, Carol phases back into her street clothes, standing outside her favorite childhood donut shop. She sees another sign, Sugar's Donuts. Official donut of Captain Marvel, it proclaims. I don't know that we've made it official, she states, which doesn't sound good according to her old friend Little Lewis, although he lets her know that no one's called him that since he hit six feet tall. After a quick catch up with her old friend, Carol takes off for home. Arriving at that simple house, she's greeted by her mother, Marie, who stands on the front lawn waving. Why didn't you call ahead? She asks as Carol lands. The two hug before Carol heads into the back to find her brother JJ, and they catch up a little while playing some basketball until they're called in for dinner. Chit Chat quickly falls into JJ asking why Carol has come to visit, since she couldn't bother to come home for years even after her father's death. All the fighting causes Marie to storm out, slamming the door behind her. But later that night, Carol finds her brother by her father's gravestone, a bottle in his hand, alcohol on his breath. Say what you want about him, but he was still her father, Carol. JJ states as he takes another big swig. Carol doesn't think that that's something to be proud of, though, refusing the bottle, as Joe tells her, that she always thought that she was too good for the rest of them. He tells her to fly away anytime. He stumbles back to his car, and he drives away. Anger swells inside of Carol as she stands over her father's grave, and one punch is all that is needed to leave it shattered into pieces. The violence doing little to ease her rage. In the distance, the sound of a car horn crashing reaches her ears, and taking flight, she discovers that... Her brother has driven his car off the bridge. Pulling him out of the wreckage, she quickly flies him to the hospital. Nine months pass in a blur, as the doctors explain the severity of JJ's brain injuries. While he finally wakes up, he isn't the brother she always had. Tony reaches out, but Carol needs more time. Her family needs her. They bring JJ home, and Marie tells her that she can return to her life. She knows that the world and the Avengers need her, but Carol refuses and decides to stay, moving her stuff into JJ's old room. She should have gone home, though, because in JJ's room, she found a box. 
searching through its contents. She discovered something she never knew. Old love letters from her father for someone who obviously wasn't her mother. Something else was in the box too. A strange little piece of technology that looked out of place for having belonged to her father. Taking it out of the garage, Carol tries to activate it, resorting to using a hammer to get it to open. But her mother's voice interrupts her and she heads back into the home. As she turns back, that little strange device, well, it activates, launching through the garage ceiling and flying off into space. It travels faster than light, receiving a signal and returning to Earth, a comet streaking through the sky. Later, Carol is sitting on the floor of her bedroom trying to make sense of the letters that she found. Memories flooding into her mind, funerals of her brother Stephen and her father. Her breathing begins to struggle again, and it begins to come in gasps. She struggles to get it under control as her mother calls for her, and crumpling up the letter, she heads downstairs. Marie looks at her and says that she can see that something is wrong with her daughter. She's noticed it for weeks, but Carol brushes off the concern, stating that she is here for her mom and JJ. They don't need to worry about her. Further north in Canada, the flaming comet crashes back down to Earth, leaving a smoking crater in a farmer's yard. The owner runs out to check on it, discovering a smoking pod with strange green liquid pouring out of it. The pod begins to warp and change as if it's unwinding, and from it crouches a blue-skinned woman. Back in Hapswell Sound, though, Carol has gotten away from her family, sitting at Sugar's Donuts with her old friend Lewis. You talked to her yet? He asks. But how can Carol tell her? How can she state that not only was her father a mean drunk with a temper, but he was also a cheater who went behind her mother's back? She doesn't want her mother to hate her for telling her this, and for not telling her. Lewis understands and tries to cheer her up, and sparks fly between the two of them. Back in Canada, the farmer is stunned as the blue-skinned woman stands before him. With no hesitation, she pulls out some sort of breathing tube from her throat, yanking it free with a disgusting pop. You alright? You got caught in that fire or something? The farmer stammers, but the woman just stares at him. Fire or something, she repeats. The farmer stammers at a few more words, offering to take her to the hospital to get her some clothes. And in response, she punches him in the face, dropping him with one blow and walks away. Back in Maine, Carol has finally decided to tell her mother, going out to her garden where she is struggling to get any work done with Carol's alien cat stalking around. Hey, you wanted to know what's bothering me? She asks as she starts to help. Her mother thinks that she knows she thinks that Carol needs to get back to the Avengers. Ma, it's not that, it's about Pops. Her mother's stunned as Carol holds up the letter. Carol needs to know the truth. Without a word, her mother stands up and walks away, heading down for the small dock by the house. Ma, come on. We have to talk about this for once. She calls as she follows. Carol thinks that her mother is trying to protect the memories of her father, but she is stunned to find that her mother knew all along. She doesn't understand how her mother would let her father do that. How could he allow her to treat them all this way? Her mother doesn't expect her to understand. I loved my husband. He wasn't perfect, but I loved him. Her mother doesn't blame him for wanting more. Later, out of anger, Carol punches a crater in the moon. She can't take it anymore. She can't stay here. Flying home, she slips inside, wanting to say goodbye to JJ. She leans over him. I miss your stupid face. Love you, she whispers. JJ's eyes flutter open, and in the dark, Carol hears him struggle. Love you. She yells to wake up her mother. JJ's back. But in Canada, the Cree hunter has used a tracking drone to find her prey, and she is coming. Having stolen a boat from Canada, the Cree warrior has finally arrived at Hapswell, smashing through the local lobster trollers with a single-minded determination. She is close. Carol needed to clear her head, and she goes for a run with her old friend, Lewis. Carol! He calls on the ground as she looks back, shocked out of her memories to find that she is floating above him. When I asked if you wanted to run Mitchfield with me, I meant the part down here, he jokes. He understands that she got distracted and thinks that maybe it's time that she left the old letters alone. But Carol can't do that. She can't believe all those little things that she didn't see about her family back then. Were we normal, Lewis? She asks him. Taking her hand, Lewis lets her know that he's always noticed her. The two begin to lean in close. The girl's distracted by a strange beeping noise, something that Lewis can't even hear. He leans in for that kiss, his eyes closed, but Carol pulls away. Something's wrong with the sound, it's ripping through her head. She flies off to check it out, leaving Lewis all by himself. Flying home, she finds her mother with a strange device that she found with her father's letters. Marie can hear that noise too. This whole thing, it shouldn't be here, she states, but that was just old junk from her father. Her mother grows angry. She doesn't know why he even kept it. Carol grabs the device and with a simple toss, throws it over the house and into the ocean. Still angry, her mother heads into the house with a slam. While Carol and JJ note that they're probably getting takeouts tonight after hearing their mother destroy some dishes inside. You found the lettuce? JJ asks, surprising Carol by letting her know that he already knew. 
He lets her know that they always knew, and suddenly Carol is hit with a memory of seeing their father with a woman floating outside the lighthouse while they kiss. With a gasp, Carol's hand goes over her mouth. I really must have buried that. Back in town, Lewis notices a strange little flying ball moving around. Taking his broom, he moves to investigate. Back at the Danvers, her mother has finally calmed down enough for the two of them to talk. The two begin to discuss what happened in the past, how her mother's love for her father was an accident, how she chose to stay. Carol begins to gasp, her breath coming out in wheezes, anxiety taking over. Becoming lightheaded, she falls from the docks, disappearing under the water. She begins to sink, but suddenly strong arms circle her, and she's lifted out. Sorry, Ma. She gasps, but her mother can handle it. And that's when they hear the noise again. Back in town, the small flying drone has begun to destroy things. Lewis steps out, trying to get the thing's attention, yelling insults at it. The drone turns, firing lasers at Lewis. My bad, you do you, he yells as he jumps back behind a dumpster. Suddenly, Carol is there, punching the thing into pieces. Before she can figure out what's going on, though, more Kree drones arrive. Wanting to keep the town safe, she flies upward. The drones, they give chase. She leads them away, yelling for her mother to get inside while she takes the drones higher. A few quick energy blasts and the drones don't last long. Turning, she sees the Cree hunter pulling herself out of the water by the house. She lands in the yard, yelling for her mother to get back inside. Stop, sweetheart. I can handle it. Besides, she's here for me. With those words, Carol turns around to discover that her mother has transformed into a Cree warrior. Carol's mother Marie was born Mari L, a Cree warrior trained from birth. She grew up strong, being trained on how to stay alive. She achieved the rank of captain, becoming the champion of the Cree Empire and the first Supreme Directorate. Her mission was Earth, and for this she was given the amulet of Pema, a Pema, which would cloak her true appearance. But this is in the past, and in the present, Carol's surprised and confused by her mother's new appearance. But there's no time for arguing. Marie will explain in time what has happened. Traitor! Face me! The hunter yells as she fires energy blasts at the two of them. Carol hits the ground hard as Marielle launches herself at the Kree. The two begin to exchange blows, but the hunter is strong, throwing Marielle into a tree. But she is defending her daughter, and she launches into another attack. A powerful energy blast launches the hunter away, leaving Marielle winded. Pulling her mother up from the ground, the two hug, with JJ coming out in his wheelchair, incredibly confused. The Kree thing is contagious? You gave it to Ma? He asks as the two of them walk towards the now mildly destroyed house. Carol thinks that she got her powers from her mother. Marielle explains that what Carol thought was an accident that gave her her powers was actually her Kree biology adapting to combat. Her powers are her own and they always have been. With a few minutes of breathing room, Marielle tells her children her story. After being given her mission, Marielle traveled to Earth. She was blown off course and landed in the Boston Harbor. It is there that she found their father, Joe, and she followed the first rule of a Cree assimilation, never present with a power. Over time, the two began to fall in love, with it becoming harder and harder for her to hide her powers. She stayed with Joe as her cover, at least that's what she reported to her command. When she couldn't hide it anymore, she told Joe her secret, which is when she realized she loved him. Marielle became pregnant with Carol and left her old life behind. As Carol grew older, Joe became more and more distant, seeing threats from a warrior culture that he couldn't stop. He became scared and angry as Carol grew up and talked about becoming an astronaut. Marie would have done anything for her daughter, despite how angry Joe had become. The two began to cry and hug, forcing JJ to tell them to knock it off. When suddenly surprise shows up on his face as he's lifted out of his wheelchair, the hunter holding him aloft. Ma! Carol! Help! JJ yells, but the hunter orders him to hush. She brings a message from the Empress. The hologram begins to glow. Marielle, Captain of the First, you have been tried as an absentee and found guilty of high treason. Your sentence is death. As the warrior flies away, taking JJ with her, she orders the drones to destroy Carol and Marie. Working together, the two warrior women make quick work of those drones, and then they split up, hoping to find JJ and the Cree woman. Flying into town, Carol sees Lewis, who's pointing at the burning church, JJ hanging from one of its burning rafters. She swoops in to save him, and he tries to warn her off. It's a trap! He yells as the Cree warrior comes leaping through the burning wreckage. Colliding with Carol, the two land on the ground, fists flying, but Marielle arrives to save JJ, managing to get him to safety before the Cree's energy blasts knock her out of the sky. Working together, Carol and Marie pour on the energy beams, hoping to take the Cree warrior down, but the energy is too much. Carol begins to overload and she can't control it, screaming for her family to get back. The blast throws everyone away and Carol is launched, spinning through the air. Her mother recovers, rushing into combat again. Spinning through the air, Carol remembers the day that she met Marvell. Their love, 
Their accident gave her her powers, except they didn't. It wasn't an accident. It was her Kree cells awakening just like they are now. Ablaze with this new energy, Carol rushes back to help her mother. Seeing the incoming threat, the Kree launches a spear into our hero. Marielle moves quickly, shielding her daughter from the blow. With a scream of rage, Carol rushes the warrior, her eyes glowing with white-hot anger. But her mission complete, the Kree disappears. No! Carol screams. Holding her mother, Carol listens to her final wishes and flies them into space. The two land on the moon where the dying Marie gives her daughter the amulet of Pema. They return to the lighthouse, the place where Carol saw her mother and father kissing all those years ago. Ma, what was your mission? It was you. It was always you. Marie answers with tears in her eyes. She's gone. Two weeks later, after the funeral, Carol's brother JJ headed away from Maine, trying to find his way in the world. Carol agreed to go back to the Avengers, filling in Tony on everything that had happened and the revelations about her family that she had learned. The two friends share a hug on the moon, and in the end, she stands on a cliff overlooking the ocean with her friend Lewis. Despite that he always wanted more with her, he knows that she has her own life. You get through saving the planet. You know where to find me, he tells her. With that, Carol takes flight, going in the one direction she always has. Up. And there you have it, Captain Marvel's new origin. Now, personally, I like this. I think it's time for them to start cleaning up the Captain Marvel origin if they're going to make her such a forefront of the Marvel Universe. I mean, do you remember when she knocked out that guy? <laughs> like, legit, clobbered him. That almost like destroyed the character's credibility in anything. But they're doing a great job of repairing her right now. Uh, is doing, And I've really been enjoying what they're doing with Captain Marvel as of this moment. But since Captain Marvel's not really a true mainstay of our channel, let me know if you want more Captain Marvel storylines. We did start up one a little while ago and left it at a closing point, but we can do more of that with the Kelly Thompson run. Uh, either way, subscribe to our channel if you want more Captain Marvel, more Iron Man, more Thor, more Street Fighter, more Wonder Woman, and more Batgirls in here if you can't see her. Uh, if you want more of these characters, because that's what we do here. We do audiobook narrations, basically, of your favorite comic books, or the lores to video games, or what happened in movies and comic books, and I've already said all that. Thank you so much. Find me on Twitter, find me at Twitch. I'll talk to you later.